Red Wildwood Baseball Park where tonight Sheboygan North hosts Crosstown rival Sheboygan South in the first of two uh, conference games these teams will play this week. Uh, joining me for the broadcast is Tom Grams. I'm Mike Martin. Uh, Tom, North comes in with a 3-0 and record, 1-0 and in conference. South is 0-2, 0-1 in conference. Uh, South uh, hurting a little bit too because they have some kids gone on a band trip. Yeah, we understand that they're quite short-handed. They got a bunch of kids uh, missing, and uh, they are expected back possibly tomorrow. And uh, there's another North-South game already on Thursday, and hopefully some of those players will be available for uh, for Coach Derek Lumens uh, on Thursday. At any rate, when uh, we got the uh, lineups for tonight's game, uh, towards the bottom of the South lineups, they do have a couple of uh, JV players that will be pulling double duty. Uh, there was a game before this one. The South JVs uh, defeated North by a score of five to one. Uh, uh, hopefully, we got a good one tonight. I know that uh, South will be throwing their best pitcher. I think tonight, at least one of their more experienced players, a kid by the name of Jacob Rice, who was actually a starting quarterback for the football team. He's uh, was I think second or third team All Conference. I think He's his dad is the coach, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's a pretty good athlete. Yeah. They also got a couple other kids that are not too bad. Ben Soik, Seth Stolpa, and another kid I remember from football and from actually umpiring JV baseball a couple years back, a kid by the name of Mason Prunick, who's a very fast runner. Uh, so it's not like they're totally down. But no, uh, you know, with the conditions out here tonight, Mike, too, it, you know, it, it's tough. It was 45 degrees on my car thermometer coming in, and, you know, with the... Uh, the season just getting started and probably not a lot of outdoor practices under their belts. You know, it, it could be a struggle for both teams, but hopefully we'll see a good game. And, of course, with this kind of rivalry, uh, you know, people are ramped up for it. What you're saying is the weather could be a bit of an equalizer. Hopefully uh, we'll see a good game. I know it's nice and warm up here in the booth, if that makes any difference. I might have to take off my Chicago Cubs sweatshirt. <laughs> Uh, for North, they're going to be starting a kid that's played on the varsity for the last three years, Weston Yerk. He's a good one. Uh, the other thing that North has a big advantage over South is experience. Uh, Dylan Lindahl is going to be leading off at short. He's played uh, all uh, last three years, and uh, he's a good one. He's uh, going to play college baseball, Tom, well, shortstop. We'll be looking forward to seeing him. And a lot of times at the high school level, you put your best athlete at shortstop, either pitcher or shortstop. Uh, and a lot of times those positions are interchangeable even at the high school level. I got a reason why I didn't play shortstop. You were left-handed. And I wasn't that good. <laughs> well, <laughs> you got two reasons. A <laughs> couple other kids to look for in uh, North lineup. They do have two uh, sophomores that started as freshmen. Uh, Kenny Nasey's kid, Jacob Nice. Uh, you can pronounce it Nice or Nasey. They go either way on that. Okay. And then uh, the other... Is uh, and by the way, Jacob is going to play third base. The other one is a uh, second baseman, Derek Brent Witter, whose dad Scott, I think you would know, he's a oh, yeah. uh, Sheboygan Falls Sheboygan kid. Sheboygan Falls guy. Scott was a good tennis player out in Falls, and uh, actually was a good baseball player too. He played, I think he played for Howard's Grove a little bit, and uh, played the last several years, last couple of years with uh, Cleveland in that uh, Sunday East Shore League. Great. So, uh, but uh, anyway, Brent and uh, Jacob are two uh, young kids that are sp been starting the last two years. Uh, another kid that'll help North is uh, Eric Johnson, uh, Dr. Mike Johnson's son. Eric uh, has been playing uh, baseball for a long time. He's a catcher. He's a pretty good, pretty good arm. The other thing that makes him a good catcher, he's a hockey player. Oh I think yeah. He's a goalie. Then he doesn't even have to wear any gear. <laughs> no, I, matter of fact, I think you should be tough it out and not play with any gear on. <laughs> maybe, maybe you can maybe we'll let him wear a cup. <laughs> I'm not going there. <laughs> uh, anyway, prior to the game, uh, we did I did a couple of interviews with the Derek Lumens, the new head coach over at South, and a coach uh, interview with longtime coach Chris Wright over at North. And uh, we're going to play those. I think the way this is going to work is we're going to show the uh, Lumens interview first, go to a commercial break, come back and do the Chris Wright interview, and then uh, go to another commercial break and come back for the start of the ball game. So s stay tuned and uh, hope you enjoy the uh, interviews with uh, Derek Lumens and Chris Wright.
baseball and what makes you qualified to coach uh, varsity baseball at South? Yeah, um, I played b high school baseball at Wapan, where we were a pretty successful program there. And then I came into the Sheboygan area and played my college baseball at Lakeland College. Uh, I spent one year down at uh, Madison East High School coaching there, and then obviously the last couple years with the A's. So I'm uh, happy to be here and, and be part of the South, South program this year. I think South is happy to have you too. Uh, coming into this year, having coached the A's for a couple of years, and now you've been working with high school kids for the last couple of weeks, really. That's all it's been. Uh, what's the difference? Uh, when we when we get guys at the level of the Sheboygan A's, uh, we just get guys in kind of small refinements, and they're there to get reps and get some work in. Now, uh, with our kids here at South, we're trying to get a little bit more development. We're really young in, in terms of a program, so there's a lot of development been happening in the last couple of weeks. Let's talk a little bit about some individual players. I know Jacob Rice is a kid that uh, I think I umpired like six of his JV games a couple of years ago. He's a heck of a player. He's a fast runner. Uh, what does he bring to the table for you? We're going to ask a lot of Jake this year just because he's one of our few seniors that's got a lot of experience at the varsity level. Uh, we've only got three or four kids who are varsity rich and experienced, and he's one of them. So we're going to ask a lot of him out on the mound. He's going to lead off for us a lot this year, and, and he's going to move to center field and use his speed to try and track some balls down for us. Mason Prunick's another kid, uh, very aggressive football player, and uh, I know he was a pretty good baseball player when I saw him his JV year. And he's a very fast runner. Uh, what do you expect out of uh, Mason? Yeah, that's one thing our team does have is a little bit of speed on the bases. Uh, Mason's kind of in the same role as Jake. He's got a lot of the varsity experience that a lot of other guys don't have. Uh, we're going to rely on him in the outfield uh, as well, and he's going to try and kind of bolster our energy in our lineup in the back half for sure. And who are some other kids that uh, we should look for in, in uh, tonight's game? We've got a pretty good core group of sophomores. Uh, ben Soik and uh, Bailey Pursuti have been doing a lot for us so far, and we've got a couple kids on a band trip like Jacob Bonin and uh, Lars Krugel who will help us out this year as well. Now you mentioned you're missing about eight kids uh, from the baseball program on this band trip. Are they going to be gone on uh, Thursday too when we do the second North-South game? Luckily they come back Wednesday night, but they haven't had uh, practice for a week now, so we missed them uh, a little bit here, especially because we missed four of our varsity guys there. So it'll be nice to get those guys back, but we'll scrap with a lineup together tonight for sure. All right. Thanks a lot, Coach, and uh, good luck this season. Yeah, Give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? <laughs> to be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.com. They said a bottle was just a bottle. Joining me is my longtime partner, Chris Wright. He's even been a longer time the head coach at uh, Sheboygan North. How many years has it been, Chris? Uh, 30 years, 28 with the varsity. And uh, we kind of talked before. I said it it's, seems like it's gone really fast. It's hard to believe, you know, from the 80s. And now, you know, we're in the 2017 and pushing that. It's, it's Joining me is my longtime partner, Chris Wright. He's even been a longer time the head coach at uh, Sheboygan North. How many years has it been, Chris? Uh, 30 years, 28 with the varsity. And uh, we kind of talked before. I said it's, it's, it seems like it's gone really fast. It's hard to believe, you know, from the 80s. And now, you know, we're in the 2017 and pushing that. It's, it's, it's really gone fast. And it's, uh, there's a lot of players, a lot of kids. It's hard to remember what kids were in what class. Uh, but I, I've enjoyed the, the ride, and North's really treated me well. Now, last year was a little bit of a long year, and uh, I know you had some injuries. Uh, you had a great start to the year beating uh, uh, Bayport. Yeah. 
one of the better teams in the conference, I might add. Uh, how do things stack up for North High this year? Yeah, you're right, Marty. Last year we had a lot of injuries. We uh, we lost Jackson Pottis and Ben Miller before the season started. We lost Western York during the year, and we lost Kyle Moyer during the year, and Dylan Agard came off of an injury. and So we really struggled with injuries last year and just could never you know, get over the hump. And I think this year, with the success of the Legion program, the North and South teams doing well, and was kind of learning how to win, and if we stay healthy, and eligible, uh, hopefully we can win some games. Arguably, you got uh, one of the better players in the conference, and Dylan Lindo. Uh, what's he gonna? What part is he gonna play in your team this year? Well, three years in a row, when you can put one guy at the top of the order <laughs> and lead off, uh, that really helps. And he's an, an outstanding uh, infielder. No, no, don't put any balls tonight, Dylan. Um, he's an outstanding leadoff hitter. He knows how to take pitches. He's really smart. He's kind of one of those kids that's kind of quiet, kind of leads just by his presence. And uh, we're hoping that Dylan, you know, can play some college ball in his future. And, you know, he's kind of been our leader there and, and kind of the guy that's been healthy for us. Weston York has been another kid that's uh, been pretty productive for you over the years and uh, played, I think, since his sophomore year. Moving up, he's a senior this year. Uh, what is he going to bring to the table? Well, he's going to be on the mound tonight, Marty, and he's really pitched really well against uh, Bayport. One thing he does is he, he kind of mixes his pitches a little bit, but the most importantly, he throws strikes. And the other day, you know, he didn't strike out a lot of guys. He let his defense take care of it, and I think we got a pretty good defense. And so we're going to let him you know, take care of that. When he's not pitching, he'll be he'll be anchoring first base. You got two young kids, uh, Witter and Nice or Nazy. Uh, talk a little bit about them and uh, what they bring to the table. By the way, they were playing regularly as freshmen. They're going to be uh, sophomores this year. Yeah, they're real special, and they're hitting in the two and three hole. And uh, if you know, if you haven't been out to see baseball or you get a chance to watch this, you should come and see these kids. They're pretty special, and uh, to have them both, you know, just sophomores, I'm, I'm pretty lucky. Uh, both. Uh, Brent is kind of a guy that kind of really takes care of the uh, the box a little bit and knows how to hit the other way, and he can bunt, and he's a really good contact hitter, and Jacob kind of drives the baseball, and they're both outstanding defense. Jacob can just chuck it from over at third, and then uh, Brent at second turns a mean double play, and be playing some shortstop for us in our future. Last question has to do with uh, Jackson Pottist. Uh, injured all last year. How is that going to play into this year, and uh, what do you see in his future? Good things, good things. He's a D1 prospect. We'll be having some colleges come up to see him. Uh, here's a kid that can throw mid to upper 80s already. Uh, Left-handed, big kid, uh, really can bring it. Now, he's not going to throw tonight. He'll probably throw on Thursday for us. But, uh, you know, again, you don't get kids like this in the city very often. And if he keeps working hard and uh, kind of learns the game a little bit, you know, he's, he's got the skills and the talent. You know, it's just if he puts things together, you know, he's, he could be a D1 player. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. Good luck this tonight and good luck this season. Sheboygan South is uh, taking infield right now. North took theirs during the interviews. And uh, umpires are down by the North dugout. Uh, Jimmy Rush is one of the umpires and... Uh, Paul Hauser is going to be the other. I think Paul is a phi ed teacher out in uh, Falls, Tom. Yeah, I think at the elementary school. You know, I've been gone for. Uh, You've been quite gone a few forever. Years. Yeah, <laughs> at least from there. You know, uh, went to Howard's Grove a couple different times after leaving Falls. But uh, yeah, uh, I th I b do believe at least he, I know he was a phi ed mm -hmm. teacher out there. In case uh, I think our fans don't basketball. know, there they are. Uh, Jimmy Rush is on the. Right hand side with the ball bag on his hip. Hauser's the other one. And uh, Steve Peterson is the uh, coach talking to him. Uh, Tom was a long time, Tom Graham's my partner tonight. He was a long time uh, staff member out at uh, Sheboygan Falls, taught uh, history, I believe it was, social studies, mm -hmm. and then uh, was a principal. And uh, what were you, principal of the world that one year? <laughs> <laughs> state of Wisconsin. State, state of Wisconsin, okay. That's close enough. Four, I think it was. Okay. Getting to be quite a few years ago now. And then also did a couple of stints out at uh, Howard's Grove, too. All right, right. Helping out. Played baseball here for the Sheboygan A's for quite a few years, but probably, uh, you know. Did you play at this field ever? Never. No. Okay. I we were retired before right, then. Right. Did you ever play here? I played here for three games. It was against the uh, Wade House old time oh. team. I did actually play here. 
There, he had an alumni game or something. God, that's right. I played in that one, too. Yeah. That doggone Wilkie hit one out on me. <laughs> <laughs> he joined the ranks of many. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Uh, we had some good times playing for the A's, though. Oh, yeah. That's part of the reason I asked uh, you to come on board. And uh, by the way, when we have the game on Thursday, hopefully the weather will be nice. And it'll be a little earlier in the afternoon. That'll be nice. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Dave Gare is going to join us. Dave also played with the A's. He's a, he's a Hall of Famer for yeah, the Chicago Dave, A's. Dave was a much much better player than you or I was. Yeah, he was, he was, was one of the great ones. Yeah, played a long play. time, too. Well, he also played at UW Lacrosse, uh, you know. So he's, you know, when we were coming up, at Tom, least when I was coming that up. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I made the team at Lacrosse right? one year. Yeah. Well, they didn't have any high school baseball when I graduated. Yeah, you not know, me either. South and uh, so, you know, my baseball experience was little league baseball, and then uh, playing in the when I was I was in the Air Force after high school for four years and played fast pitch softball actually, okay, but that's not baseball. They bring uh, it there. Yeah. Yeah. And then it took me a while to get acclimated to baseball when I got out of the service and came back here and went to school and played in the summertime. Uh, you know, and, and when we played with the A's, I mean, now they play, you know, between 50 and 60 games. When we played, it was between 20 and 30, maybe I a little over was, 30. Yeah, I was thinking about 35, if you'd ask uh -huh. me, but that seemed like a lot, you know. Yeah, it did. All of us, and, I, and, you know, the kids that are playing nowadays, too. But, I mean, you're working all day and then you're hustling to get here or go on the road uh, yeah. and, you know th and not everybody lives in Sheboygan some of right. those kids are driving from out of town well and they I think they take many more longer trips now mm -hmm. than we did when we played too you know but even then you know we're getting back at midnight or whatever and if you got to get up the next day to go to work uh, you know that that gets to be tough yeah I remember Donnie Diener always talking about how he you know, I, I think he was working for a beer distributor then, and he was, you know, carting around those big quarter barrels or right, half barrels yeah. of beer. And, you know, he's... That's Physical tough. job. Yeah, it's tough to throw those things around. And then go out and pitch nine yeah. innings. Yeah. We had some characters back there. You know, uh, uh, Carl Beringer managed uh, at first uh, when I started playing. I don't know. He was probably gone. He away. was. He um, When I first started, he was the manager. Oh, he was. Okay. And uh, Chuck Zeichert was a player. And then, uh, of course, I think it was Chuck took over, Chuck for, took over for, for Carl. For the rest of the time I played, Chuck was the manager. Right. Then. Yeah, you came on board, I think, a year or two after I had started. What was it, 72? 70? Okay, I was 71 uh, maybe. I got out of the Air Force in 72. Okay. And so, but I got out in July, so I didn't start till 73. 73, yeah. Okay. And I really didn't play much in 73 because, like I said, I was just getting acclimated to baseball again after fast pitch softball. But then starting in probably 74, and from there on. Mm -hmm. Played pretty regularly. So we really only played together for uh, two full seasons, 74, 75. What year did you start then? So you actually 68. started. 68. Oh, really? Summer of 68 I played. Right out of high school. Right? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then uh, I was in the service actually for a couple of years when you were playing and I was gone then from 72 to 74. I missed three years. And then uh, we played together in 75, and then I went out to Howard's Grove after that. Okay. How many years did you play with them? Oh boy, that's a good question. Ten years. I'm trying to think. I what year was my son born? Because I know I quit uh, when I hurt my knee, and my wife was pregnant with TJ, who's 37 now. So <laughs> you would he have been born? <laughs> uh, all right, all the teams are lined up for the national anthem, and uh, we're going to stand up in the booth, and uh, Ellen Wright's going to put on the uh, tape and play our national anthem.
It wasn't Wayne Mesmer. <laughs> so, who, Billy Joel? Okay. So, were you paying attention to the national anthem, or were you figuring out how many years you played oh, with I these? Oh, I wasn't even thinking about it, yeah. I think about 10 years it was, though, something Okay, like so you had a pretty good run. I, oh. I played six, I believe. Six or seven, somewhere in there. I did play one year when I was in the Navy. I played uh, on the base softball team, and then uh, one year I played with the... Uh, they started a league. It was more like a college league, but... Uh, I was able to hook up with the team and played one summer of baseball out in Virginia. That was pretty much fun. It was an interesting group of guys. Yeah, yeah. you get to be good buddies with the guys you're in the service with, and you're living and working together all the time. And right, right. Now, you were stationed overseas, right? I was stationed in Italy uh, okay. for a year and a half. Uh, and you'll notice we haven't had any problem with the Italians since then. Uh, you know, uh, uh, really, it's... <laughs> It's amazing how long that uh, relationship can last <laughs> when you get the right people in from, right. Be from the beginning. That's right. <laughs> now you see Weston Yurick warming up. Uh, his catcher is uh, Eric Johnson. Let me run through the defense for uh, Norris since they're going to start on the field. Yurick is pitching, Johnson catching. Jackson Podast is at first. Brent Witter at second. Dylan Lindau, who's... Uh, all conference caliber players at short. Jacob Nazy is in is at third base. Nick Askalevich is out in left. Sal Parra is in center. And Ben Miller will be uh, manning right field. For uh, Sheboygan South, their lineup fits like this. Jacob Rice will be batting leadoff. He's the pitcher. Bailey Prasuti will be playing third and batting second. Brendan Thimler will be hitting third and playing first base. Seth Stolpa is out in left, batting fourth. Mason Prunick in center, batting fifth. Ben Soik is catching, batting sixth. Elliot Pedon is at short and batting seventh. Jackson Penny is playing right and batting eighth. And Cam Meyer is playing second base. And DHing for him is Colin Brennan, who is the DH, batting ninth. And those kids, uh, those last three names I mentioned, are uh, JV players, and so due South to the band trip. Yeah, yeah. And so South had a little bit of a disadvantage. First pitch by Yerk is in the strike zone, and uh, Rice follows it off, and we're off and running. Fifteen minutes late, not too bad, I guess. No, you know, with a JV game preceding this one, it always tends to delay things a bit, but uh, not too bad. Uh, dress up the field a little bit, and both teams did take. Uh, uh, infield, Ellen Wright was a little worried they weren't going to do that. She said, you can't start a game without taking infield. She was right. Next pitch is uh, down a little bit. It's uh, one and one is the count. You know, actually, Mike, with the temperature being at 45 or so, it's pretty cold, but there's not much of a breeze. What there is, it's blowing out towards center, but it's just barely moving the flag, so it's not as uncomfortable as it could be if that wind was howling on a night like that. I was night. telling people this afternoon, I was uh, working in the garage and cleaning stuff out and putting out some of the things for, for the summertime, and uh, once you get moving out there, it wasn't bad. I mean, and I assume with these guys, you know, once they get moving around a little bit and get acclimated, it won't be as bad as you might think. Line drive foul. I'll tell you, Rice has been... Driving him down the right field line. Hit a little bit late, ball. and, in, you know, that pitch was up, and, you know, it's hard to turn on a pitch way up there. That probably was a ball, but he didn't quite get around on it. Count is one ball and two strikes. <coughs> You're going to have to give uh, Dave Gare a call and tell him all the fun he's missing. <laughs> Ball bounced in the dirt, but uh, good block by uh, Eric Johnson. He throws out Rice at first. Next hitter up for uh, the Red Wings is uh, Bailey Prasuti. Third baseman. Prasuti is a 10th grader. Young guy.
Now, when I look at my rosters, Prasuti was with the uh, varsity grouping. Uh, so even though he's a sophomore, he was starting on the varsity. Nice running catch by the third baser. And that was a little an easy. A little pop down the third baseline. Too quick up and down for the Red Wings. Brendan Thimler up next. First baseman. A left-handed first baseman. God, you got to love those oh, guys. Oh, Tom, you should know. <laughs> they, are the, they are the big thumpers. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did lead the A's in home runs one year, I think. What, well, do you have two? No, I think I had four. Whoa, <laughs> so that's, yeah. hey, when you don't play that many games, that's still pretty good. That might have led, led the A's two years ago because <laughs> they didn't hardly hit any home runs. Well, we played at Legion Park, remember, and if you could pull the ball down oh, the line. Oh, right. Ooh, there's a nice shot. Drive down the right it's field in, line. It's fair. Sudi uh, makes the turn at first, but it's going to hold, but uh, that was a great base hit. Line drive down the right field line, just inside the foul line. And those left-handers can really hit. Yeah. And I actually think I led the A's in stolen bases when you were with about three also. <laughs> there weren't a lot of high records in those days. <laughs> hey, a record's a record. You lead them for the season, you lead them for the season. It doesn't matter. First pitch is bounced to a Pottest at first, and he makes the play unassisted. And at the end of a half inning of play, south nothing, north coming to bat. Quick. Top of the first. No strikeouts. Rush wiping off home plate, and we're ready to start the uh, bottom of the first. Uh, leading off for North is their shortstop, Dylan Lindau. Lindau, like I mentioned earlier, Tom, is a all-conference player. is looking to play uh, possibly at St. Norbert's. I think there was another D2 school. I can't remember what Chris said the name of it was. But uh, point is, Lindau is a good player. I see on Chris's notes that he, you know, he's started and led off all his last three years. So 
but that kind of experience uh, portends well. Right, exactly. The uh, south defense is uh, Timor at first, Meyer at second, Pedon at short, and Prasuti over at third. In the outfield, it's uh, Stolpa in left, Prunik, one of their fastest runners in center, and uh, Penny is uh, out and right. Soik is the catcher, and Rice is the pitcher. You mentioned about Jacob, a good athlete. Uh, was an all-conference quarterback, I think second or third team, second team probably, but uh, he's a good one. Added something to the program, that's for sure. The flag is hanging absolutely limp out there now. So yeah, no breeze at all. It's a good thing it's not coming off the lake. <laughs> oh boy, right there. Rice having a little trouble finding the strike zone. It's three and one to the uh, leadoff hitter, Lindo. By the way, Tom, I don't know if you're aware of this, the WIA instituted a new rule this year with pitch count. I remember reading something about it, but I couldn't tell you what it is. You know, I don't they have, it yeah, I should, I, yeah, Ellen's going to get the sheet for us. I'm a counter, not oh, tonight. Really? But uh, they have certain levels that when you reach it, then you have to get so much rest. No pitcher can go over 100 pitches. And the only time they could is to finish off a batter. but uh, And then you'd need four days rest. So who does the official counting? Uh, there's a, like if I was doing it for this game, I'd be somewhere in the stands or maybe up here doing it. And then you go down each half inning and you share confirm your, it. yeah, right, okay. to confirm. Because uh, usually what a team will have is someone counting in the dugout also. And that way you match it up, make sure everything is correct. We had a, I think that'd be a pass ball that got through the catcher. Uh, right, Lindo, there. Lindo walked and, yeah, pass ball, you're right. Anyway, I was thinking about the implications of that. Uh, if you had a team that could, you know, take pitches, you know, you could yeah. wind up making it pretty tough for the starting pitcher in terms of just taking a pitch or two. Ooh, nice pick by the first baseman. Hard ground ball down the third baseline. Good base running by Lindau to take third after the throw. Prasuti, is that the third baseman's name? Yep. A nice pick and uh, one hop to throw to first, but uh, there. Bailey Prasuti over at third. Tim uh, picked it up nicely. So we got a man on third with uh, less than two outs, so he'd be looking to get him in. Maybe a fly ball. He wants to make contact, that's for sure. Jacob Nazy's up. You mentioned uh, Nazy's a sophomore playing third base tonight. He played third base from the start of the season, Tom, as a freshman. Uh, Witter started the season on the JVs and was moved up uh, partway through the season and finished with them. Uh, started on varsity basketball this season as a sophomore. He's a good athlete. You do that at North, that's saying something. They've had some awful good teams. Yep. Rice having trouble finding the strike zone. I was looking at the middle of the infield, Chris. They're pretty far back. Or, Tom, I think anything hit in the middle of the infield is uh, going to score a run. I think they're conceding that. Huh? Up at third, but even the first baseman's back. And Line drive. Nice play. Steps on the bag for the out, but uh, Lindo comes in and scores. A hard hit ball on the first baseline and a nice pickup by Timler. Uh, you know, maybe if he'd been playing up a little bit closer, he could have gone home first, but uh, took the shirt out. And probably early in the game like this, that's not a bad idea. You got two outs now, nobody on. So. I agree with you there. Next up for North is uh, Nick Askalevich. Now, there's a name when you look at it, try to pronounce it. I'm glad <laughs> that you pronounced that one. <laughs> Like the Greek freak, they call him the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. How do you pronounce his last name? Anta Kanop Kanopo. I don't know. I, I'm actually asking him. I don't. I don't because I don't know. Yeah. Anta Kanopo. It's a dandy. Giannis. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Oh, 
Bucks have had an interesting year this year. I normally don't follow much pro basketball, but this year, uh, for a couple reasons, uh, you know, they're more interesting. And Malcolm Brogdon, who plays for them, is uh -huh, right. from Virginia. And uh, my son works with the Virginia basketball team, so uh, I know Malcolm a little bit. Uh, he got us some tickets for a game down there. And, oh, sweet. Uh, he's really a good guy, and so I've followed them a little bit more closely than I might have. Pitches inside. Uh, missed the batter, but uh, even the count at two and two. <laughs> they got one and two on the scoreboard. I might be wrong. I hard, hard to believe, Marty. <laughs> I know. Uh, that could be trouble. Ball out to right. It is. It drops in. Not able to get that ball was uh, Jackson Penny. And in with a double is uh, Askalevich. Yeah, that would definitely be a double. I think he got a glove on it, but it would have been a heck of a play. Slicing away from him. Next up for uh, the Raiders is their pitcher, Weston Yerk. Yerk uh, comes into the season with one RBI. He's uh, two for ten. But it's early. He's got experience. Third year on varsity. Pitches inside for ball one. Steve nice. Peterson with uh, on our screen now, the first base coach for the Raiders. Looks like Rice is having a little trouble keeping his pitches down. He's got a lot of stuff up there. And and, you know, even like that flare down the right field line, that, you know, for the double, that pitch was up. And if you can get, you know, the bat on the ball there, you got a chance of dumping it over the infield. So looking at uh, the notes on Ash Ashkelevitz, and uh, during the summertime, he plays for a team out of Appleton. He doesn't even play for uh, the Legion team here in Sheboygan, which I find kind of interesting be some kind of connection over there. Huh? Yeah, like to keep those kids that are good players sticking around. There was a Recolitis boy a couple years ago played on a traveling team one summer and then his senior year he came back and played with the Legion team that year. And I think uh, overall, and I believe I talked to him about it once, he said uh, it was actually more fun playing with his friends. Sure. Kids he knew. Didn't he, is he playing at UWM now? Or I, I believe, yeah, I he believe was so. was last year. I haven't heard anything about this year. I talked to uh, Mary over at South High a couple of weeks ago, and uh, both boys are seem to be doing quite well. Good, good. I see their grandpa, Wally, at the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? He, he was quite an athlete himself. He's still in good shape for his age, working out every day at the Y. That's amazing. You know, it's something I could never get myself to do on a regular basis was work out. Well, you know, when you got a body like yours, you don't, you know, it's already know. finely tuned. That's kind of what I was thinking. Yurik <laughs> <laughs> just hanging in there, tipped that ball foul. Count is two and two. There's two outs. We've got a runner on second. It's one to nothing, north on top. Rice on the mound for uh, south. Trying to work out of the inning. Walked the leadoff man, Lindow, and he wound up coming around to score. Now that would be a wild pitch. Yeah, for sure. So they got a runner on third now, and, but with two outs. So we just need to take the batter here and get out of this inning. You look down at the uh, fans in the stands. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit chilly, but it's not like it's freezing out there. Well, nobody started any fires yet. <laughs> no, not in the stands. That pitch is low and out, and uh, Yerk draws a walk. And that brings up Eric Johnson. And 
and we're gonna are well, they gonna give Yurk a jacket? I thought they might be having a courtesy runner. But um, Mr. Wright is not faster than Weston, so they'll keep him at first. <laughs> so the situation, we got two outs, runners on first and third. Johnson up. And uh, Rice has struggled this half inning. Yeah, his control is... Stolen base. I think that's to be expected early in the year, you know, pitcher's control. Uh. There's one thing that's uh, quite a bit different at this level is uh, throwing down, you know, with a man on third and a steal attempt. Strike call there. 0-2 oh now, so he's ahead of the, the batter. The years that you played with uh, the A's, Tom, who was the best pitcher you came across? Oh, wild, wild pitch. pitch and uh -oh. oh, there was a gift run. Yeah. Who was the best pitcher you played Again, with? Played with or against? Yeah, no, with. Oh, boy, we had some good ones. Uh, Bob Sauger pitched an awful lot. Uh, uh, more known for his consistency, he would pick it up uh, all, you know, he was always out there. Rick Rice could throw very well. Yeah. Um, we really struggled with our pitching. Uh, uh, that was probably the weakest part of our team when, when I was playing. Uh, I was Harley thinking that's Brock was a good yeah. pitcher for us. I was thinking that's part of the reason why they were throwing uh, Bob Sauger as much as they did probably. Poor Bob, he <laughs> had to answer the bell so often. But he was a workhorse. Uh, he did a nice job. Big guy, too. You know, if you're going to have a workhorse type pitcher, he'd yeah. fit the mold. I think I'm probably forgetting somebody in there. You played before uh, Casper and uh, Eckert? Yes. Yeah. And was Ronnie Hare done? Uh, Ronnie Hare was on the team, like, his last year of actually pitching was my first year and you know he was a little bit older at that point and his arm was giving him problems uh, so I didn't certainly see him at his best. And did we get Mr. Grams on the mound at all? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was lucky I could throw it in from first base. <laughs> Jackson Potest, the first baseman is up now for North and uh, right back where they were just a few pitches ago with runners on uh, first and third now it's Johnson who just drew the walk at first, and uh, Weston Nelson, uh, pardon me, Weston Yerk over at third, and uh, I think he can look for Johnson to take off, maybe first pitch, uh, I Tom. I guess so, yeah. And so they probably won't even throw down. Potest is a big guy. Yes, I, you know, I was no noticing the size. Actually, North's got a bunch of pretty good size players. Pitch uh, goes outside there. You see Johnson, number four at first, being held on by uh, Timor. Line drive just off the glove of the third baseman, foul. Our crew tonight, we have uh, Robert Ingram is our director. He's being assisted by Nathan Free on graphics. The uh, cameraman tonight giving you that shot is Greg Zablocki, camera one. Richard Bartson down the uh, right field line giving you that shot at camera two. Tom Grams doing color tonight, and I'm Mike Martin doing play-by-play, -play. and that's your crew. I think uh, if he's still around, Corey, I didn't get his last name, was helping out uh, before we went on the air with setup. Uh, give a shout-out to him also. And we'll be right back here on Thursday. Thinking about that pitch count thing, Mike. Uh, he's got he's, a bunch. He's thrown a lot in this first inning. I think the uh, first benchmark was uh, at 30 pitches, and he's got to be pretty doggone close to that. Uh, I wouldn't be a bit surprised, yeah. There's Johnson stealing second. Got a full count now with... 
Runners on second and third and two outs. Two to nothing north. Hit here. Could uh, really do some damage now. A good rip at that ball, but followed it straight back. And that looked like one of Rice's better pitches, too. Right? He had a down, and he had some hop on it. Yeah. Uh, thank uh, Coach Lumens from South and Coach Wright from North for uh, getting us the lineups and the rosters and the current stats for tonight's game. We really appreciate their efforts with that. Does Jackson Podhast have any hits this year, Tom? Three for eight. Well, he's fouled off a couple of good pitches here. Yeah, he's getting some good rips at uh, Rice. Another walk. That is the fourth walk in the inning. Ben Miller is up. Uh, Lumen's coming out to the mound. Settle his pitcher down. Miller is another kid, uh, Tom, who's uh, played a lot of baseball over the years. I think he's been on the varsity the last three years. Uh, Chris mentioned last year was a kind of a lost season for him because he had a lot of injuries. One of the guys injured was uh, Miller, and uh, I think he missed all season because of a football injury, actually. Ben Miller, the right yeah. fielder? Yep, he's uh, up to bat now. Yeah, it says on the notes that he tore his ACL in football. Good kid. He was a uh, Pigeon River boy. So was Johnson, the catcher, and Yerk, the pitcher. They're all uh, from uh, Pigeon River School. First pitch by Rice is a ball. Sometimes, you know, a pitcher runs into problems like this, and if a little base hit right up the middle by Mil Miller, that'll score, score two. Just the cutoff, man, and all of a sudden it's four to nothing. Well, he knew Rice had to come in with some because, you know, he's been struggling with his control. They had a meeting on the mound right before that, and I'm sure, you know, Lumens said, you know, you got to get the ball over. We can't keep walking these guys. And so uh, he was ready for it and hit it up the middle. Well, Rice has worked his way through the order. This is the number nine hitter, Sal Parra. He's out in center field today. Sal's a pretty fast runner. Breaking ball is up high for ball one. Four to nothing north. Parra, that's a major league baseball playing name. Yeah. Manny Parra, and there's another Parra too, isn't there? Geraldo or yeah. Geraldo? Played, played outfield for the Brewers a couple seasons. Yeah. I think there's a couple pars up in the big leagues, or war anyhow. Yeah, right. Manny's gone. Good rip at a pitch. Good throw by Rice. Got it right down the middle for a strike. One ball and two strikes. Close. Yeah, that's, I was just thinking he's having trouble getting that breaking pitch in, and then you, you mentioned it with Miller, you know, when you got to come in there, they're waiting on it, they're sitting on that fastball. Well, he's run the count full again. Yeah, really. It's going to mess up my scorebook. I have to go into a second inning, and we're not even done with the first. be interesting to see what that pitch count is. I know. Maybe we can send Ellen down to get in on the conversation. He got him. Struck him out on a good pitch. But uh, productive inning for North. They score four. And at the end of one complete, North on top, four to nothing.
food. It nourishes, brings us together, and adds flavor to life. That's why it's important to wash hands, surfaces, and fresh produce. Keep raw meat, poultry, and seafood separate from ready-to-eat foods like fruits and vegetables. And cook to proper temperatures using a food thermometer. Enjoy! And refrigerate leftovers within two hours. For more tips on safely preparing foods, visit Home Food Safe. Oh, sweetheart. Can I give you a hand? <laughs> no, thanks, Dad. I got it. Okay. I'm going to go fix the lamp in your room. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take your chance. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming rules. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules. Now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always. Lock it up. Leading off the uh, inning for uh, South is their center fielder, Mason Prunick. Got to like that number, 25. <laughs> that was my A's number. It's not retired, I know that. <laughs> you know who wore that number not too long ago? No, I don't. Jacob Bristol. Oh, is that right? Yeah, and I let him know you got some big shoes to fill, man. Jacob's <laughs> in uh, medical school right now. Right, yeah. Going to be an orthopedic surgeon? I not, I saw him not too long ago, just a couple of weeks ago. He was subbing over at Jefferson. Really? Yeah. So, good looks guy, good. Good family. Right, yeah. Jeff is a good athlete, his dad. Yeah. yeah. Jeff is uh, one of the assistant basketball coaches at South. And it'll be interesting to see what happens with uh, as South looks for a new coach. And right, basketball. yeah, good point. Prunick falls that pitch back. Another souvenir for some lucky fan. Oh, no. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Give it back. <laughs> ben Soik, the catcher, picked it up off the screen, put it in his pocket. I think she's going to bring it up to the plate with him, give it to the ump, though. He won't take it home. Prunick got around on that pitch. Drove it foul. Full count, three balls, two strikes. Weston Yurick had a pretty good first inning, didn't throw too many pitches. No, but South made some contact against him, so. Yeah, uh, no strikeouts, you're right. Ooh, called third strike. Looked like it might have been just a bit outside. Prunick doesn't say much. Uh, Coach Lumens is uh, questioning the call. Maybe Robert Ingram can give us a replay of that. I don't know if he had him. Maybe he didn't check his swing. It was hard to tell. But I think you uh, got it right, Tom. Just a bit outside. Close enough probably to swing at, though, with two strikes. Right. He can't. There's, There's a good a rip, but it's foul. Uh, ben Soik is up now, the catcher. You don't want to leave it in the hands of the umpire. Not that they're bad. No, I think the bad ones are retired. <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. <laughs> Mike used to be an umpire, and Mike was a good one, so <laughs> let's give him a little <laughs> shot there. <laughs> when I think back, you know, to the umpiring part, I can honestly say most of my thoughts, when I think back, the memories of umpiring have been positive. I mean, you always run into a couple situations or a couple players that maybe aren't very well grounded, but uh, for the most part, it's uh, been a, it was a great experience. I think when you're umpiring high school ball, it's probably not too bad. Sometimes when you get the amateurs, semi-pro kind of stuff, you know, the guys are a little bit more vociferous. Uh, 
More opinionated. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Ball bounces in. Evens the count at two and two. There's one out. Getting pretty dark now. Definitely need the lights on. I remember, Tom. Another strikeout? Yeah, another one. I can remember early on in my career with uh, the TV station, and the equipment was not the quality that it is now. The camera would get the infield. Hmm. You had a hard time seeing the outfielders beyond that. And anything that was hit out there, you know, it's just about impossible for the camera to capture. But you look now, I mean, it's almost like a day game when you're looking from the home plate camera. The camera, actually, it looks brighter on the TV screen than it does looking out at it. You know, these lights are not the best. As a matter of fact, the Sheboygan A's are in the midst of trying to raise money to have these lights replaced. You know, baseball is... Send your checks to Denny Moyer. Yeah, I'm sure Denny would appreciate anything. But, you know, unlike softball, you know, the, the quality of the lighting that you need in baseball is much, much more. Yeah, right. The ball's so small. You know, and the speed and everything is just, uh, you know, I'm sure that. You uh, know where else they were really bad? I mean, these are, you know, they're not good for what they should be, but they're not that bad. But where I think they were really bad was Legion Park. Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> They weren't as high even as these no. uh, poles are, and and to, th to think that they used to play minor league baseball there, uh, that must right. have been. Yeah. But a lot of character in old Legion Park, that's for sure. Some interesting uh I remember lines. when we did that uh, Denny Moyer show, and uh, you and Dave were talking, and uh, I think Dave made the comment about, yeah, it had character, but it had a thousands of stones on the infield. Oh, geez. And I remember Gene Mand, when, when we asked him about it, and he said, uh, with the power alleys being over 400 to left and right center, I'll take Wildwood any day. Yeah. <laughs> being a power Ooh. hitter, there's a drive to he left. that good. Going that back as Askelevich, he can't get it. Stops on the uh, right on near the foul line, and uh, in that second with a double is uh, Elliot Pedon. A well-hit ball. Not a round on that one. So with two outs, South has a runner at second, and that brings up Jackson Penny. Jackson Penny is a junior, playing out in right field. And uh, let's see what we got for Jackson on his uh, batting average. He's a 0 for 1, uh, kind of forced into service uh, with the band people being gone. Takes a pitch uh, right down the middle for strike one. On deck is Cam, well not Cam Meyer, but Colin Brennan, the DH. Yeah, that was a really nice hit. Well hit ball, yeah. So when you think back of your playing days, Tom, what umpires do you remember? Not counting me, but uh, oh, good or bad. We had a lot of the uh, Land O'Lakes umpires, you know, uh, from the Johnsons, I think, from Sockville. And, oh, what is this uh, bug we got crawling here, Marty? Is it a big one? Yeah. yeah. You're in charge of bugs. At the... Uh, Penny struck out, and uh, West Weston Yurick wound up striking out the side at the end of uh, inning a half. North on top, four to nothing. We'll be right back. Jeez, that was a big one. Visit ncpc.org. Got a quarter.
So he can throw down to second after uh, Rice's warm-ups and we're set to go in the second inning and uh, right back to the top of the order. North batted around in the first scoring four runs. It's back to Lindau. Lindau walked and scored. And hopefully Jacob Rice can find the plate a little bit more regularly this inning because uh, his pitch count had to be really be high in that first inning. First pitch uh, goes inside for ball one. So we had the Johnsons from uh, the Land of Lakes. Any local guys you remember? It seemed like when I I remember oh. when I played, there was seemed like we had a Cubby lot more. Cubby Spath was a good umpire. Uh, I don't remember him. You don't remember Cubby? They call him Cubby because he was a Cub fan, big Cub fan. I'm surprised you don't know him. Uh, you know, I was at a Cub game was it last year or two years ago with uh, the Horsens, and uh, the Spath family was down there <laughs> at yeah. the game. They always they, they had a big family. They had a lot, they had a lot of. Well, they'd had that Toys for Tots. Yep, yep that's right. They had a team that. just made up of spaths. I'm trying. Jim Diamond. Yeah, Jim Diamond. Uh, yeah. Umped a lot of games. That's getting to be quite a few years ago, Mike. You're asking oh, me. Oh, yeah, right. That. that is, you're right, it is. Is that 30 years ago? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, over 30 years ago. Right, yeah, over 30. Every once in a while, Rice can bring it. It's just a matter, of, like you said, keeping it in the strike zone. Yeah, his control he's struggling with, but. He looks like he throws the ball pretty well. I mean, he's got a little hop on it. Two balls and two strikes. Lindahl leading off the inning for uh, the Golden Raiders. It, the South's got somebody throwing over there. I don't know if that's a pitcher that potentially would have to come in with the pitch count or not. Oh, he threw a curveball. Yeah, got, got that break and pitch in. I well, I mentioned about the different thresholds. The one, the one that you really want to know about is the threshold for when you have to leave, and uh, that's at 100 pitches, unless you're s still batting or pardon me, pitching to a batter. And let's say the first pitch to him was your hundredth pitch, you could continue pitching to finish him, and then you have to leave. Ball driven out to right. Right at the right field there, though. So, mm. two pretty quick outs for Jacob Rice in the second. Yeah, that's exactly what he needed. Penny making that catch out and right. Uh, Jacob Nazy. Finish him. Finish him. And then you have to leave. Now, we remember his dad, Kenny Nazy. When he played, he was a, well, he was an outstanding third baseman for the A's. Good hitter. Didn't play a lot of years, I don't no, think. No, you're right. That was the thing. He didn't play a long time. But th what I, the reason I bring this up is we knew him as Kenny Nazy. Last year, when I think I did one game, uh, they were saying it was Nice. He had changed around. Well, then we asked Chris before tonight's game, and he said, eh, they go either way now. <laughs> So we're sticking with the old way, Nazy. Because we're old. Yeah, exactly. I was thinking before when you were talking about, you know, me throwing and <laughs> they moved me to first base. I played left field, actually, my first year that I, w I played quite a bit. And uh, John Moyarty played first base. And right, I remember I played with John. I remember he was the longtime Oosburg basketball coach and really a good an excellent baseball player from New London, Wisconsin, and played for UW Lacrosse. Did he? Yeah. And left-handed hitting first baseman, and he only played for the A's for one or two years, and uh, then when he left, they immediately got me out of the outfield. Uh, <laughs> 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 said we got to get this guy closer <laughs> so he, he can get the ball in. <laughs> That was actually a good plan by Chuck because that way you could throw infield every half yeah, inning yeah. and strengthen your arm. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. It was part of my <laughs> weightlifting program, throwing the baseball. Next up is uh, Nick 
Escalivitz. Estalevich. Looking for that pronunciation. I had it written out. Rice gets ahead with a fastball there. He is throwing the ball a little bit better now, I think, this inning than the first inning. At it was uh, really, it. really good for him to get those first two guys out. Right. It's too bad he couldn't uh, finish it off quick. Yeah. Maisie will be running. There he goes. Drive to right. Be out of play. We're in the bottom of the second. North on top, four to nothing. They got uh, the big hit in that four-run first was uh, Ben Miller's uh, two-out. Bases loaded single that drove home, drove in a couple. It was two to nothing at that point. That's that was the key hit of the inning. And uh, Nazy not running on that pitch, Tom. Now you know he was all the way over to third on that last pitch, so maybe they're gonna let him catch his breath. But he'll be going now, I'll bet. Yeah, could be. Well, one ball and two strikes, right? be a good pitch to run on, but he doesn't go on that pitch. Uh, just stays up a little yeah. bit. Looked pretty close. Hung up there, I think. Looked like a really tough pitch to take. Bouncing ball to third. And a good scoop by nice Timor scoop. on the other yeah, end. Prasuti making the play again. A relatively easy inning for Jacob Rice and the South High Red Wings. And at the end of uh, two complete, North on top, four to nothing. Kids who play outdoors have healthier lungs. Totally. Did you know that boys that play with dolls make better husbands? My son has lots of dolls. But did you know terry cloth diapers breathe better? I did. Mm -hmm. Totally true. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you guys know statistically friendly kids have more friends? Yeah, that's obvious. Did you know most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? The parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child... Getting ready to uh, start the top of the third. Johnson uh, with the throw down after uh, Yerk's warm up pitches. Yerk working on a shutout. He's given up uh, two hits. He struck out three. He struck out the side the last half inning, Tom. Yeah. Quick inning. There in the background, you see uh, Derek Lumens, the uh, brand new South coach, first year. We have the DH up here now, DHing for the second baseman, a little bit different. That's well, one of the uh, things that's uh, a good, I think, uh, stra or not strategy, but rule for high school baseball that allows more people to uh, play, you know, where you can DH for any of the positions. And a lot of times your pitcher is one of your better hitters anyhow in high school baseball, so right. you just assume uh, keep him. Yep. Yerkes pitches outside. I can remember when I was uh, coaching high school baseball at Chilton, uh, the rules were much different in that respect. It was traditional baseball. Uh, and if you, let's say you had three subs and you uh, were winning by pretty much and you got them all in the game, but then one of your guys got hurt, 
and you had a finish with eight, it was a forfeit. Really? Yeah. So it's so you you're almost wanted to keep somebody on the bench. Exactly yeah. right. You almost had to hold somebody out just in case. Pop up on the infield. Really high. Whoa. Whoa. A little bit of a snow cone there. Yeah, making the catch was Jacob Nazy. But he hung on. That's why you want to use two hands, kids. Jacob Rice, the pitcher and leadoff hitter. Up. Jacob uh, struck out his first time. Oh, I got it over here. On the season, Jacob is one for six, hitting 167. That'll go up. Actually, one for seven now. That means it's gone down then. Right. <laughs> he gets a hit here. It's then it'll go up. Then it'll be up to 250. But his on base percentage is 500, according to this. Taking a lot think of walks? Yeah, I don't think that's right. No, it doesn't look like it. Because I don't see any walks in the walk column. Well, either that, they, there's probably some walks because they haven't, they played a couple games, so right. they just haven't registered them in, on that stat sheet. Because nobody that's has any walks according to that. Yeah. Does have an RBI. Ooh, I thought he was going to go after that one. Yeah, it was a little bit high. Uh, two balls and no strikes. Another pitch out of the strike zone. Weston Yurk having a little trouble finding the strike zone with this batter. <coughs> When uh, Jacob was a sophomore, he was on the JV team at South, and uh, through some kind of a quirk, I wound up doing six of their games as an umpire. Umping? Yeah. Uh, at least one of the dates was a doubleheader, but still, you know, it's not a good situation to ump the same team that often. It's no, hard to be perfect sure. for okay. six games. Five and a half was pretty good, though. <laughs> Prasuti up here is only a sophomore, third baseman. Prasuti popped out his first time up. He's made a couple of nice plays at third. Throw over to uh, keep Rice close. Rice is a good runner, too. He's a... Uh, would be a guy you think might take off. Breaking ball is a little bit outside. Evens the count at one and one. Lumens probably isn't going to be running him too much with him being down four zip. Yeah, uh, good point. But you can stay out of the double play if he can get a good jump. Uh, Given the uh, lineup, uh, it's not like you're going to string three or four hits together. Right. You know, right. and have one of them be, a, you know, like a bases clearing double or something. So you almost got to force the action a little bit. Richard Bartson giving you that shot. I'm sure also they're telling their batters to be patient with being so early in the season. Pitchers are struggling with their control. There's a strike. Two and two now. Yeah, Prasuti with a good rip. One out, man on first. Four to nothing. North on top. Ball gets past uh, Johnson. Pass ball. I would think so, yep. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> My back sitting on these stools. <laughs> You can go low profile on the chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least we're warm. Exactly. 
You can thank Ellen for that. All right, another walk. Salt's got two men on. Nobody else. One out, excuse me. And that sets up the uh, infield fly rule. But don't tell Timler that. Timler on a base hit to uh, right field his first time up. Hit the ball hard. And a uh, real nice play by uh, Ben Miller to hold him at a single, too. Trent Keitel coaching first base for uh, South. Trent, a former A's player. You going to do any games this year? Announcing for the A's? Um, sure, I suppose, you know, uh, when I'm around. Runners on at first and second for South. Ooh. Pitch swung and missed. Johnson with a good throw, but a little bit late. Another pass ball. That was a nice throw. He almost had him. Ooh. Pitch swung and missed. Johnson with a good throw, but a little bit late. Another pass. <laughs> you know, they have a... A lot of the interns for the A's. Miss Johnson with a good throw, but a little a bit lot of late. Announcing. Another that's and a. They, they do a nice job. I was going to say that's really a great program. It, it is, uh, yeah. gives those college kids a chance to uh, get out and get some experience. I and think uh, they get some college credit for it. You know. Yeah, they do. And it really helps out the A's. Oh, yeah, for sure. South with a great scoring opportunity. They're down four to nothing. They have runners on at second and third and only one out. And uh and Timberler who's had some good rips at it is up yeah. there, so if he could gap one here or he could score two with sure. a base hit to the outfield. York's pitch uh, rides up high, evens count at two and two. He's struggling a little bit more with his control this inning. Yeah, exactly. He was cruising through the first and the second. It's a good breaking oh. pitch for strike three. I'm surprised Timler took that one. That looked like it was right down the middle. Well, I think he was confused by the curveball. Wasn't expecting that. All righty, two outs. It's all up to uh, Stolpa. Stolpa on the young season is uh, one for five, hitting 200. Pitch behind home plate and uh, out of play. Johnson not able to uh, get to it. Good effort by Johnson. And he walked right through the mud puddle. <laughs> That's the bad lighting, Tom. <laughs> he didn't see the mud. Huh? No. It is pretty dark behind, right by the uh, fence area on the warning track. For the folks watching on TV, you look at that picture and it looks, geez, that's pretty bright out there. Yeah. Well, come the cameras uh, do a good job picking up whatever light there is, but it isn't quite that bright out there looking <laughs> out on the field. There you see Rice over at third. Behind him is uh, Derek Lumens. So I'm going to pitch that was up yeah. and in. That was a ball. You bet. Stolpa now with the one ball, two strike count. Yerk with the excellent opportunity to get out of the inning. Strike yeah. three. Close enough to swing at, right? Exactly. Don't want to take that pitch. Not when you got men in scoring position. At the end of two and a half, North on top, four to nothing. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean.
Yeah, why? Well, um, what would the neighbors think? <laughs> I see you! Come look at Mr. Feather! Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark! We're just playing! We're just hurt! I'm trying to get you out of here! Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. start the uh, bottom of the third uh, we were in Arizona for a couple weeks as you know Tom and when we came back and listening through the voicemails one of them was from a uh, James Barini he was a student of mine out in Chilton uh, and he's organizing what they call a vertical reunion have you ever heard that term multiple years or right exactly and they're having it May 20th it's a Saturday at the fairgrounds and then the uh, not that it's in conjunction with, but the next day on Sunday the 21st, they have their uh, uh, Calumet County Beer Festival. <laughs> at So, you know, it's all kind of running together, but it sounds like a real interesting uh, concept. And uh, on his website, he had a couple of uh, uh, two or three minute clips with various retired teachers from Chilton oh. that talked a little bit about their experiences. One of them was a little bit longer, about three minutes. And it featured famous Chilton graduates, oh. like Dave Casper was sure. let it off. And uh, was Steve Thorwater in there? No, he was not. He, uh, I'm sure they contacted him though. Maybe, yeah. Uh, he was a good athlete there. Right. Yeah. He he never did play with the A's. Though. I remember he. No. You know, he, he wasn't a great baseball player. I don't think he's a big baseball fan. But okay, he played football and uh, basketball. Basketball would seem to be yeah. a good sport for him. Yeah, he was on UW Oshkosh's team. Who? That uh, good effort by Timler there. Yeah, Yerk uh, at bat. He's sitting with a two-ball, one-stray count. Yeah, he was on UW Oshkosh's team. I know. One time, I remember as you and me. And Steve and Dave Gare went golfing up, oh, maybe towards Appleton. And uh, anyway, it was, it was a nice day. I'm glad you guys asked me that time. It was quite a few years ago now. Yeah, that's a long time ago. What was the name of that course we used to play over there? Pull the string on that one. Yeah, top to right in front of home plate. Oh. And, uh it looked like uh, Stolpa had a play on him and uh, just didn't, or Soik, pardon me, and just didn't get the throw there. Who are we going to give him, Tom? Pull the string on that one. Yeah, Got to be an error. Right uh, I assume on the throw. I couldn't, I was kind of blocked by this poster. I didn't see, all of a sudden I saw the ball bouncing away. I didn't know if it hit the runner or. You know, I thought he had a good chance at him, didn't make a good throw. Pull the string <laughs> on that one. Yeah, top to right in front of home plate. Yerk is on first base via an error. And uh, stepping in to hit is uh, Eric Johnson, the catcher. You know, speaking of those vertical reunions, I know some of the smaller schools do that because my wife uh, went to Random Lake and they do that at Random Lake. And then she moved her senior year to Elkhart Lake and Elkhart Lake also has. So both Random Lake and Elkhart Lake, I know, do some of those vertical reunions where they include, you know, multiple years. Ellen Wright and I were talking a little bit about this uh, concept before the game. And uh, she said, yeah, at a smaller school, it's uh, doable. But you come to a school like North or South, you know, where you got thousands of kids, well, you know it's a little more do, difficult. Like, you know, uh, I graduated from South, and uh, we do a combined North and South reunion. Oh, interesting. Because, you know, there's a lot of kids that are married, someone from the other side mm -hmm. of town, or some of their good friends, because in middle school and grade school, you're going to yeah, school, and all of a sudden you're split up. We do a combined up, North you know. and South reunion. And, oh, uh, interesting. We've, we've done that 
Oh, probably for our last five reunions now. Every five years we... At our 40th, there was a vote on uh, how to do the uh, next one, and one of the votes was to combine with, with uh, South, and uh, it didn't get voted in. And I was kind of surprised that it didn't because I thought it was a good idea. But uh, So we've continued to have ours just separate. But I think when uh, I was talking to some kids from the South Side and their reunion, they just have a whole different way of celebrating than the kids from my class. I mean, they get out there and dance and just have a great old time, and uh, the North kids are much more reserved and aren't like that, so maybe it wouldn't have been a good fit. Well, you know, one of the reasons that we like it so much, too, is there's actually a lot of work putting on a reunion, and if you can get, you know, the committee from both schools together, you, oh. get, you can split up some of that work, and, it, you know, contacting people and all that stuff... Uh, Jerry Vandercreek, who graduated from North the same year I graduated from South, has a big database, and he does a great job with that. Uh, Keeping up with all that. Yeah. Yep, reunions are uh, a lot of work, and uh, I've been uh, on the committee for working on The first year, I remember, they gave me the names where they couldn't find addresses on the, on the, on the kids. So I had, like, about 10 people I was supposed to try and track down. And I actually did track down a couple. I was able to find them. It's a little bit easier. A little bit easier with the Internet. Yeah. That, I can't remember if that was the 10-year reunion or longer, but uh, it wasn't quite as easy that time How'd as that it was. How'd that ball get through there? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> that, I think, I remember if that, that if was the 10-year reunion. If it goes over the screen, there's a little, a little space in there. A little right? space, yeah. Huh. Wonder do you you hear that feedback too, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, I wonder what's going on. Do you think that's coming o over the air too? That's a director's fault. He's got to fix that. All right, we got three balls and two strikes on the hitter Eric Johnson. Eric on first. There's a drive out to right. I think that's going to be a foul. Oh, it was right on the line. No, just foul. That was close. Jimmy Rush right there making the call. Eric on first. There's a drive out to right. Eric's on first. There's oh, a drive boy. out to right. I think I know what it is. It's something with the way he's running the replays. Oh. I'd still like to see a replay on Prunick's strikeout. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to the first inning. <laughs> Ellen wouldn't run down between innings to check on the pitch count, so we don't know where Rice is at. And she's yawning as she sits next to us. Ay, ay, ay. It's hard to get dependable help. <laughs> Amazingly, even at these prices. <laughs> <laughs> Another walk. All I right. think uh, Ellen has just maybe a year or two less than Chris Wright on uh, years with the program. I mean, you've been here forever doing these games. How many years you got in? Huh? It's not polite to ask a lady that, you know, Mike. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just uh, trying to lay down the sacrifice bunt, move the runners over. <coughs> bunt did it fall? Pontus is a big boy. Yeah, he's a big one. You might want to let him hit away instead of bunting. Himmler and uh, Prasuti edging in at the corners. Pitch uh, rides outside. I think Pottis is he's the pitcher that Chris was telling us about, right? That, yep, he's uh, the one. He's their ace? Uh, I'm not sure. Ellen, is he the best? He's the ace. He'll be going on uh, Thursday. Pulls yeah. back, but it's in there for a strike.
Chris Wright flashing signs down at third. Johnson dancing off the first. The breaking pitch. Ooh. Just hung outside. Evens the count at two and two. We're in the bottom of the third, north on top, four to nothing. Bouncing ball to second base. And uh, Cam Meyer takes up. it right to first, but that does move the runners up. Good as a sacrifice bunt. You bet. Second and third, one out. North looking to extend their undefeated season. Now, Ben Miller had that two RBI single in the first. He's got another chance right here with only one out to uh, do some more damage. Have a big day, yeah. Yeah. See what uh, Jacob Rice does with him. It's How do you like that rule change in the majors where you can uh, just send the guy down on an intentional walk? You know, it was done to save time, but how many... How much time is that going to save? Um, I don't know. It's fine, I guess. Uh, that ball is hit foul. I wish there was some way where they could get those games from being three hours, 3.15 to like an hour, two and a half to 2.45. I don't well, know. It's if they fine, could guess, make so. the batters stay in the batter's box in between pitches, and, uh, you know, have the pitchers I throw the it's ball with, fine, I guess. you know, that's what's taking the time. The intentional pass, uh, I it's fine, I guess. Think back about 20 years ago, Mike Hargrove, remember him? The he human rain delay. human rain <laughs> delay. He was like the only guy that did that. Now they all do it. Yeah. The breaking ball in the dirt for a ball. It's uh, two balls and one strike. One out. Miller up. Miller's one for one with a couple of RBIs. North on top, four to nothing, looking to uh, expand on that lead. Salt has the infield up on the edge of the grass. They're thinking they can't afford to give up too many more runs here. No. Topper in front of home plate. Right home. Right. You got a two at third base now. Run him there. There you go. Good play. Play by the uh, catcher Soik to uh, get the runner at third. Miller's going to reach. Front of home plate, right home. Right, you got to. And they kept the runner at first base too. Topper so in front of home plate. Right first home. and third now with two right, outs. You got to. Right. Next up is the number nine hitter Sal Para. Para went down on strikes. So Rice with a chance to uh, work out of the jam. Chance to get out of it without any damage. If he can get the number nine hitter here. Topper in front of home plate. Rice. Coming home. Right, you got to. Oh. Taking second is uh, Miller. He's going to get uh, credited with a stolen base, but uh, could have almost been a defensive indifference. They weren't going to be throwing down on that. No. No, he's got to get this batter. Swing and a miss. By Para. Evens the count at one and one. Looked like he pulled a string a little bit on that. By the way, just so our fans know what you're talking about, what does that mean when they pull a string? Well, it's an off-speed pitch, you know, either a slow curve or just a straight change, but... Uh, Trying to keep the batter off balance. Pitch is uh, knocked foul off the screen. Makes it one ball and two strikes. One of the keys, of course, to that changeup is you want to throw it with exactly the same motion as your fastball. Ah. So that you know, everything looks the same except <laughs> the, the speed, speed of the of ball. The ball. Right. I think uh, that was the uh, out pitch for uh, Huffman. Yeah, Trevor Huffman. Trevor yeah. Huffman, the relief pitcher. That pitch uh, was low and away for ball two. Evens the count at two and two with two outs. Runners on at second and third for North. Another pitch, uh, breaking ball in the dirt. 
If Rice could get his breaking ball in, this uh be a much different game. He's in danger of losing him now. You don't want to lose this guy and you go back to the top of the yeah, order. Exactly. Have to face arguably the uh one of the better hitters on the North Squad, Dylan Lindell. Oh, that could be trouble. Yeah, it's over the first baseman's head. Drops into short right That's for one two. run. Throw is in. Well, they take it and throw it over to second base and then throw it away, and Parr is going to wind up He's going for three. second. He's going to try to make it to third, and he will. Nobody oh, my. covering third. Defense fell asleep there. Parr is going to get credited with a single and two RBIs. And then uh, he's going to go to uh, second and third on the throw. That was, was it Timler that made that throw? I think we'll give it to him. I'm not sure if it was. It might have been the second baseman. Yeah, I'm not sure either. But uh, anyway, that's where we're at. And, uh, and then nobody was covering third. Over to second base right. and then throw it away. And Parr is going to wind up. He's going for th oh. <laughs> That's what that's you would call defensive indifference right there. <laughs> They weren't yeah. paying attention. Yeah, you take <laughs> it. Nah, you take it. Nah, we'll just let them go there. We got two outs anyway. Like Over to second a base here. and then throw it like away, and Parr is going to yeah, wind there up. There you see him, Parr. And th chasing around over to third base and uh, caught the defense napping a little bit there. Number eight. Sure that wasn't Jacob Rice? We got a Brewer score here, Mike. It's four to three Brewers in the sixth inning at Toronto. All righty. A new pitcher for uh, South. Rice uh, looks like he's heading out to the outfield. Number nine is on the mound, Seth Stolpa. Stolpa was out in left field, so maybe him and Rice are just going to flip-flop there. This is a bit handicapped here, of course, because of missing players because of the band trip, so I'm sure he's struggling with how to move these guys around. Right. Uh, he was saying that even when he's got a full squad, he only has 12 or 13 guys. So even when he's got a JVs full squad, up, huh? yeah, exactly. Well, the JVs won uh, earlier this evening, so I'm sure that uh, bodes a little bit well for the future. It's six to nothing right now. Stolpa warming up. Rice finished with uh, two strikeouts. Had a whole bunch of walks. Ran into a lot of trouble in the first inning. Six walks in his uh, two and two thirds. That's not good. Okay, Rice moving out the center, and Prunick is moving from center field over to uh, left. That's the uh, defensive changes. Well, Rice was close to getting out of this uh, inning. When he had the number nine hitter up and two outs, but walked him and then had a flare over the right side of the infield, and it's gone downhill. Yeah, since then. Situation now is North has two runners in in the bottom of the third. They have a runner on third, and Lindau, the leadoff hitter, is up now. Lindau is 0 for 1 with a walk, and he scored a run. A 1-1 one, one count to the batter. <coughs> Pitch rides high. So 
Just a little finagling with the positions. Oh, whoa. He was sending a message. <laughs> yeah. I'm having trouble. Yeah, that was the message, yeah. <laughs> Got anybody else, Coach? <laughs> That's the message. <laughs> I told you I didn't want to be up here. I'm an outfielder, Coach. <laughs> Lindahl being very patient at the plate draws his second walk and that brings up Brent Witter. Witter's a second baseman tonight. It's pretty much where he plays all the time. Timler holding uh, Lindahl on. Wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Dylan Lindahl take off soon. Run rule is 10. After the fourth or after something? five. Five. Stolen base by Lindo. There's a mercy rule in basketball too. Yeah, I see I that. I think it's in the thirties, I believe. With just a running clock, right? And after right, that, right. In the second half after yes, something. Yep. So many points. And I then it's stayed the same up with football. As much as on those rule changes as I used to. Don't what? have to go take those tests anymore. Right. Right Fine. at him. That was one of the best hit balls all night, and it's right. an out. Yeah. That one out to uh, Pursuti, and he makes the catch. And at the end of three innings of play, North on top, now six to nothing. <laughs> Get a good shot of uh, Weston Yerk, Norse pitcher. He had a good uh, first and second inning. Ran into a little trouble, but was able to work out of a jam in the third. Now he's uh, working on salt here in the fourth inning. Starts Mason Prunick off with a strike. Prunick started the ball game out in center field, and when they... Uh, Made the pitching change. He uh, shifted over to uh, left field. Made pretty good contact on that first pitch on the right field line. I'd like to see him put the ball in play because he's a fast runner. He could do some damage with his legs. There he goes. Go watch him run. He is fast. And he beat it out, I think, even if he'd caught that ball. I think he was safe. Yeah, I do too. I'm going to give him a base hit. Hit? Yeah, I agree. You're right, Martin. He can mortar. I remember him from uh, all those games I umpired when he was on the JV team. He was at that time. I thought he was the fastest runner. Uh, Coach Lumen said he thinks uh, Rice is his fastest runner, but uh, in either case, they can both mortar. Catcher Soik is up now. Soika uh, was one of the three kids that uh, went down s on strikes to uh, Yurk back in the second inning. So he's 0 for 1. Prunik on first base with his infield single. 
Bouncing ball to Nazi at third. Goes to second for one. Relay scooped by Pottis, but uh, pretty nice turn on that double play. They didn't get the double play, but uh, they looked good uh, in the attempt. Witter hung in tough on the uh, sliding Prunick. A nice play by third baseman. Good turn at second. You know what that reminds me of? No. Chicago Cubs. <laughs> Tobias over to first. Rizzo. Huh. I Actually, I was going to say it reminds me of the Sheboygan A's, but we didn't have many of those kind of. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Tinker's ever his chance. <laughs> the Cubs, their last great era. <laughs> I do remember it. Oh, Ooh, they got Johnson. Him. Oh. A little bit too high. Yeah, the throw, if the better throw, they'd had him. You had a great line about uh, Charlie Colmeter playing third. He said he threw more balls on the <laughs> Legion Park than he hit. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Charlie I said that. Yeah, nobody listens to these broadcasts <laughs> anyway. <laughs> the pitch a little bit outside. One ball and one strike. One out. Prunick is on at first. South trailing six to nothing, trying to get back in it. They had a great chance in the third, but couldn't come up with the key hit. Charlie was a guy that had uh, a really good throwing arm, and he could hit the ball a long way. I remember we played a game, and uh, it was actually part of a doubleheader weekend, I believe, in Janesville, and they had just had a kid sign with the Yankees, and he pitched against us, and uh, he beat us. We lost, but uh, Charlie hit two home runs off the guy. That might have been Jay Tobble, the left-hander. Yep. Yeah. Good player. Yeah, Charlie was a good player. And of course, uh, Charlie's line in the car after the game was, oh, he's nothing special. <laughs> he didn't have that one. <laughs> yeah. Struck out about 18 that game. <laughs> that part I don't remember so much. I just remember with Charlie and the two homes, yeah, that guy doesn't have much. Oh, there's a wild pitch. Looney kids down to second. Check this. Jacob had one wild pitch, I think. You got a runner on second and one out, three and one, three and two the count. The pitch, Ooh, a little bit low. Yeah, that looked pretty good for him. Yeah, I thought so too. Elliot Parker drawing the walk. Two men on. One out. Well, Parker was the kid that had the uh, double. Not a very big guy. No. That's what surprised me. Change uniforms. Jackson Penny is up now. Penny uh, went down on strikes in the second. He's 0 for 1. They got him, Mike. They picked him off of second base. Nice cut in behind him by the shortstop in the pitcher world, and he was dead to rights. Lessig is uh, the batter now, not Penny. And it was a one to six. Yep. On a pickoff. Two outs now, man on second. Trey Klessig in the ball game. Coming in for uh, Jackson Penny. Derek Lumen's getting his boys in the game. That update courtesy of Ellen Wright. Thank you very much. She's over there shaking her head like these guys don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not a 
good rip there. Two balls and two strikes, two outs. Man on first. And that pitch is outside. That's what will keep the game moving. Throwing strikes. Throwing strikes, yeah. Pretty close. Got to start calling those strikes. <laughs> yeah, Yerk wanted it. Somebody from the dugout yelled over. They wanted it. Two outs. Number nine hitter is up. Colin Brennan is up. Brennan popped out his first time. For, never forget all those years playing. Oh, there's a, there's a rip to left. In for a base hit that will not score a run. No. Although if they'd have sent him, they'd have scored him. Yeah, throw is offline. Now it's kicked it around a little bit. Okay, that loads it up. Loads him up now for uh, Jacob Rice. Top of the order, so they got a chance here again. Yep. Jacob 0 for 1. Walked his last time. Doesn't look like anybody's warming up in the uh, north bullpen. No action over on the south side. All their players are in the game. Well, in the dirt, gets by Johnson. A run will score. Put South on the board. Head on scores on the wild pitch. Classic moves up to third and uh, Brennan to second. Rice still at the dish with a one ball count. Still with a great opportunity to score some more runs for the Red Wings. Which is up high. I can remember umpiring in the Pitcher saying I want a different ball and threw it in, so I put it in my bag to pull out another one, pull out the same ball, threw it back to him, <laughs> game on. <laughs> <laughs> they don't Ooh. have an unlimited number of balls like at the big league level. No. I read somewhere, now this is a few years ago before they got so picky about changing balls, but if you took all the baseballs that they used during the course of a major league season, you could fit them in an 18-wheeler. You know, just pack a jam pack full of, hmm. you know, those boxes of a dozen baseballs, and that would do it. Surprising. Those 18-wheelers are pretty big, I guess. They are, yeah. <laughs> All righty, bases loaded for South. They got a great opportunity. Bailey Prasuti up. Prasuti walked his last time. South with an excellent opportunity. There's a fly ball out to left, right but on. it's caught. Well, South's on the board. They are on the board. Astolovich on the catch out and left, and uh, that shuts down the inning, but not before South comes up with a run. At the end of uh, three and a half, South now trails six to one. to nature can get you closer to your family go to discovertheforest.org
The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Back at Wildwood Baseball Park, getting ready to uh, start the bottom of the fourth inning. Uh, we're just talking between innings about the South has left seven runners on base, five in the last two innings, and uh, they've had some chances to get back in the ball game. They've just uh, not been able to get the clutch hit. That pitch is uh, up high. Dope on the mound for uh, the Red Wings. Looks like moving a little bit out there now, Mike, but still a pretty gentle breeze. And I'm sure the people sitting in the grandstand are sheltered from that. Yeah, that could drop comfortable. in. No. Drive out to right. Did he catch it? And, uh, he did. He Paul was Howers. Kind of right at him. He kind of circled a underneath it and uh, dove and caught it. I think that was Klesig out there. He came in to bat for uh, Penny and uh, made the nice catch. Trey Klesig. Didn't get a good jump on it, that's for sure. No. And again, sometimes with these lights, it's a little hard to pick them up. Speaking of a uh, hard time picking up the ball, I remember we played a game in uh, Kewaskum. It was during the week, and it was foggy. I mean, they could almost can't call hit. the game. Good hit there by uh, Askelevich. And uh, so I'm out in left field, and it's really hard to see, and they keep playing and this guy hit a rocket out to left and I saw it off the bat so I knew it was coming you know in my general direction and then I lost it but I'm running over where I think it's going to be and all of a sudden out of the fog there it is boom I got it Jeez. and everybody's like holy cow how would you do that <laughs> dumb luck huh yeah exactly dumb luck uh, Weston Yerk is up Weston is uh, 0 for 1, and he scored a run. Askalevich is uh, 2 for 3, Tom. He's got a double, scored a run in the first, and now a single here in the fourth. So he's having quite a night. Having a good night. And made that nice catch out and left. Eric a little bit late on that pitch. Couldn't pull the trigger. Quick throw over to first, gets away. Not a good throw there. Allows the uh, North runner to go down to second. He won. I have South now with uh, three errors in the game. It hasn't been the cleanest played game. No, you're right there number of pass balls. Yeah, wild pitches. When we were uh, out in Arizona, I brought my uh, Baseball Americas along, and uh, there were two high schools uh, in our general area, yeah, Phoenix Metroplex, Hamilton High in Gilbert, Basha High in Gilbert, and then there was a flip-flop in the standings. Like, I think it was the top 30 high school baseball teams in the country. It switched over to uh, uh, high school in Scottsdale, Horizon High. So there's two teams, and I was going to go, 
But to go to that one high school is almost like a 45-minute ride, oh, and the game starts at 4.30, so when I'd have been driving down there, it would have been really busy, and that I just didn't want to fight there, the traffic. Yeah. But uh, I did go several years ago. Horizon High had a pretty powerful tournament. Teams from uh, you know different areas of the West that played, and uh, it was good baseball, to say the least. Kids can play. Yeah, and those southern states. Uh, the southern states especially. Get to play a lot more. Well, you get the nice weather. There's a drive out to right. It's going to drop in for a hit. I don't know if a run will score. Get the throw in pretty good. South did. Askalevich had a stop at third. So another base hit for North. And they've got the bases loaded with only one out. Jackson Podhast is up. Their big bopper? Yeah, and he won't be bunting this time. No. He uh, tried to uh, sacrifice back in the third, was unsuccessful. And then in swinging away, hit a little ground ball at the second base that Boy, advanced the runners anyway. They pull the ball. Look, look at where the center fielder is playing. Oh, wow. The left fielder has got to cover about two-thirds of the outfield. Yeah. And he's pretty side. deep, too, I mean, you con especially con con, uh, compared to the center fielder. Potass with a good rip. Came up empty. It's a one and one. One out. Bases loaded for uh, the Raiders. Oh, Drive out to, to left, left field. It's going to drop for a hit. That'll score a couple. Prunick with a great arm. So coming through is Podest with a two RBI single. And ironically, he went the other way with that pitch. And, you know, after being played as a pull hitter, a dead pull hitter by South. Yeah, you're right there. And, and you know, if uh, Prunick's over a little bit, playing in a more normal position out and left, they might have only he scored might, a run. He might have even caught it. Yeah. Because it hung up a little bit. Coming out to uh, talk to the troops is uh, Derek Lumens. Uh, Derek, in his first year at South, he's uh, been the uh, manager for the Sheboygan A's the last couple of years, so he's uh, experienced. He knows what he's doing out there. And I'm sure he's frustrated because he's, you know, playing. They're playing shorthanded and get a young crew. Tough situation to come in. Just two. have to be patient, I guess. South had a lot of stability over the last couple of head coaches with baseball. Jeff Getz, uh, I think, had about a 13-year run as the head uh, baseball coach. And then after him was uh, Craig Clays, who uh, was in the position for about 15 or 16 years. Yeah, Craig really did a nice job. <coughs> Pitch to uh, Miller is a strike. North has runners on first and second. There's still only one out, and uh, North has tacked on a couple more runs. It's now 8-1. to one. Miller hits one uh, foul, but out of play. There's something to be said for having stability in your uh, whatever your sport is that you're coaching. Well, how many years were you out at uh, Howard's and then uh, over at the uh, Falls? I think your I coach was the head positions. coach at Howard's basketball, uh, nine years, and okay. at Falls for four years, and then I went into administration. Okay. So, uh, Did they allow, uh, I know South, or pardon me, Sheboygan frowns on uh, administrators coaching the, the same thing over by you? Well, what they, right, I, he was hit by that pitch, I think. No, we're yeah. uh, not happy about getting hit there. He'll take his base. Uh, when our principal resigned at Falls, uh, they moved the assistant principal to that principal's position. And I was a teacher and uh, had basketball coach, but I did have a master's degree. And they offered me the opportunity to take a year, basically a sabbatical from teaching and become the athletic director and the assistant principal. And if I didn't like it after one year, I could have my Go teaching back. job and my coaching job back and uh, 
I ended up staying with it, and I, I'm glad I did, you know, but I actually did miss the coaching part of it. Uh, you know, you certainly have a different relationship with with kids when you coach them as compared to being uh, an <laughs> administrator. You exactly. Know. Playing the part of the heavy. Yeah, <laughs> especially those first couple of years when I was the assistant principal, you know, you do a lot of the discipline stuff. Is that Denny walking there? Uh, sure looks like him. Let's we'll see. Sure that is. Well, we got the bases loaded for North with uh, Miller being hit by the pitch. It's one ball and two strikes to Para. He hits one to short, and uh, it's booted, and they're not going to get anybody. It's going to score a run. Yeah, that play should have been made. Actually, Mike, we're getting close to the run rule here. It's 9-1. to one. We certainly are. Lindau is up with the bases loaded. Tom is right. It's 9-1. to one. Uh, They can uh, get to that 10-run differential. South would uh, have to score something in the fifth, and then if they didn't, the game would be over. And I wonder if... Uh, South wouldn't almost be satisfied with that, uh, given their lack of players, and hopefully be able to come back at full strength on Thursday. There is, uh, depending on the threshold that you reach with the number of pitches, that di dictates how many days off you have to have. Um, we had that here, but... Uh, oh <laughs> Hey, don't be such a grump. <laughs> Rice had 96 pitches. Finally, Ellen gets something done. <laughs> Yerk had 75. Well, there's a walk with the bases loaded, so another run for the Raiders. Uh, maximum number of pitches is 100. Uh, 30, 30 pitches, you don't have to rest. 31 to 49 pitches, you have to rest one day. 50 to 75 is two days if you get 76 to 100 or more. So Rice isn't pitching on Thursday. <laughs> He's not pitching on Thursday. So we have Brent Witter up here now with the bases loaded. And hey, we kid around a lot with Ellen, but uh, we really do appreciate her uh, efforts to help us out here. Ooh. And another hit by pitch. Witter's going to take a base and get an RBI the hard way. Tom, it's getting out of hand. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that South, you know, they're struggling on the mound now, and they got a outfielder throwing for them. They're just trying to get through this game with not too much damage being done. These uh, other lines on this chart, by the way, have to do with the uh, middle school and you know how old they are. Oh. Bouncing ball oh. right to the second baseman, and uh, that ball is booted. Two more runs will score. Para comes in along with Lindau. And uh, the floodgates have opened. Brings up a uh, left fielder, Nicholas Askadilovic. we we'll just call him Nicky. <laughs> yeah, Nick. Oh, Nick. Playing Sheboygan this summer, Nick. Strike one. Seven runs in the inning. Makes it 13 to one. You going to be able to do the game on Thursday? I think so, yeah. You know, you want both of us here, though? You only have one. Uh, we got we got an extra mic. They got that out for us. Uh, but uh, I know your back's killing you, and this actually isn't going to be that long of a game. You know, it's... Well, yeah, that... Oh, we'll see. 
Pitch called a strike, evens the count at two and two. Still only one out. Is that Danny? Yeah, yeah that's Danny, yep. Oh, <laughs> now we got his attention. Pop up on the infield is an automatic out. Infield fly rule there. And that'll bring up uh, Yerk for his second time. He walked his first trip up this inning. <laughs> I told you it's PG tonight. <laughs> A drive out to center field. Rice can't oh. make the play. It gets by him. Rolling out there. One run is in. Here comes a second run. And uh, pulling into uh, second base with uh, what was almost an excuse me double is Weston Yerk. Mike, we're joined here by Mr. Baseball of Sheboygan, Danny Moyer. They have Bob Euchre in Milwaukee. We have Danny Moyer in Sheboygan. Yeah. Doesn't get any better than Danny. Get any better than that. He knows the history of every nook and cranny of this park. So, Denny, how's it look for lights next season at this time? New lights. We're just talking, Denny, about how much brighter it looks on the on the monitor than it actually is on the field because those cameras pick up, you know, so much more. Look at that shot, isn't that nice compared to looking out there. Another base hit. Johnson with a line drive hit. They're going to hold Yurk at third. Johnson wanted the RBI. Get a pinch hitter coming up for north. It'll be uh, number 10, Ryan Yeager. Yeager, a senior, coming in for Potest. Yeager uh, spells his last name just like uh, Earl Yeager. Remember him, oh, teacher? You bet, yeah. Track coach. Cross country, too, I think. Sure. Line drive up the middle. Knocked down Second. by the shortstop, ah. and they can't make the play. We're rooting for them to make the play to, <laughs> to get the inning get over. Get the inning over with. South is playing really short-handed, Denny. Just so you know, they've got a bunch of guys going on a band trip. Not able to make that play at shortstop was Elliot Pedon. Another pinch hitter for uh, North. Brendan Fortin up for uh, North. Brendan is uh, pinch hitting for Ben Miller. So Jaeger reaches on the air. Fortin up. You get these kind of games, it's nice to be able to get the uh, substitutes in. How many? They haven't had a banquet with uh, 250 people at a old timers in years. You gotta feel sorry for. for <laughs> Ryan, allowed? Do they have enough buses up north to ship down people? Sure, go ahead, take it. Yeah, he has to print some more of those. I'll have to get some more printed. I only had about 100 printed up. <laughs> Fortin uh, draws a walk, Ellen. What's that? Para coming up. Para's one for three tonight. He had a single and a couple of RBIs back in the third. 
He uh, reached on an error in the fourth and scored. That's where we're at right now. It's been a big inning for uh, North. There's a drive into the gap in right center field. It's down for a hit. Fortin was going to go to third, but right, uh, Chris Wright stops him, brings him back, and uh, North has the bases loaded. Another case where uh, Coach Wright doesn't want to rub it in. Nicholas Bickler going to be a pinch hitter for North as uh, Derek Lumens comes out to uh, change pitchers. Still four to three Brewers in the bottom of the seventh. South had some opportunities early on in the game. Oh, were you? I didn't see you. Yeah. Warming up for uh, South is uh, Brendan Timler. Uh, North so far here in the fourth has scored 11 runs. And uh, the roof has just caved in on the uh, Southsiders. Uh, good hitting. Some really spotty fielding, Tom. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. And again, they're trying everybody on the they're trying everybody on the mound to try to get through this. Uh. Well, he got the left-hander up there now, so everything's in good hands. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, I can remember. You remember Freddie Spath? Sure. Teacher at uh, Slinger, longtime football coach, actually. Mm -hmm. He caught uh, out at Howard's Grove one of the years I was playing, and he caught a game that I was pitching. Man, a life. I was like a gymnastics person out on the mound trying to catch his throws back. They were all over the place. One hoppers, two hoppers, off to the left, off to the right. Nice when you have those catchers that just boom right at your chest. Yeah, you should have been trying to play first base then. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit longer throw from third and short. Actually, you know who was really good at picking up the scoopers was uh, John Moriarty. Moriarty was good at it, yeah. Upper north is uh, Beck where he's pinch hitting for uh, Lindau. Or takes the pitch high. So you remember him as a player? Um. Nicholas Pickler, 11 runs in the inning. It's 17 to 1. Hey, Denny, have you ever gotten any complaints when that uh, really bright light goes on in the advertising section of the scoreboard? I don't want to complain, but it's actually a distraction for the announcer. <laughs> wow. Well, that'll change it then for sure. <laughs> right. Now we'll get something done. Oh, boy. Oh, they're trying to bunt for an out. Timler throws. Got him. Witter taking one for the team, in a sense. Hey, get get him out of the inning. Chris showed good sportsmanship there. He knows this one is out of hand. 12-run inning. 
They and just uh, get south out of here and this inning, and then the game is over. Get them home. The reason it only showed a two in the bottom of the fourth is the scoreboard doesn't go up higher than nine. So it was a 12 run inning. I'm sure Denny will get that changed pretty quick. Yeah, we need another new scoreboard, Denny. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Could you put another scoreboard out there, too? Just leave the other ones up there. <laughs> 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 Just take your pick, people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's one thing I'll always remember about Legion <laughs> Park. Right in center field, there was a porch light, and if that guy would have that porch light on, and if it was a right-handed pitcher, it would be coming r oh. right out of that backlight. And we, that guy, every once in a while, not a lot of times, but every once in a while, he'd have that back porch light on. Jeez, used to bug me. For a left-handed batter. For the right-handed batters, they didn't notice it so much. Because it wasn't right where the ball was coming out. Pitcher, Brendan Timler. Brendan came in to uh, finish off the fourth inning, and now he's going to lead off. He drives one to straightaway center Whoa. field, but right at Para, and he A makes well the hit catch. Ball. Timler had a nice base hit in the first inning—a single to left, and uh, or no, I think it was that single to right. But now uh, he hit the ball hard again, so he's hit the ball two out of his three times. And Seth Stolpa, who started off in uh, left field and then went to the mound, uh, didn't have a lot of success there, but now he's up. Here it go, working fast. Another pitch low. So you think 200 people he's bringing, huh? <laughs> oh, Lee. Yeah, he better, better, better you know. Ma better make it more than a week ahead of time. Well, Don't have to start chopping up cows. You better make <laughs> sure that he's, that many are coming if he says they're coming in. And, and nobody, and they make all that food. Yes, exactly. We'll save you some, Tom. <laughs> Which is fouled off and uh, makes the count. Three balls and two strikes. Caught the catcher, I think, in the throat area. Oh boy, that's not good. No, it doesn't matter if you're a tough kid or not, it still does hurt. You bet. Eric Johnson uh, stooping down, makes the call. Which is uh, low and in. Stolpa draws a walk. That brings up Mason Prunick. Prunick had that infield hit back in the fourth inning. Really showed off his speed that time. You guys went to that Brewer Cup game the other day, huh, Denny? That last game of the series? Yeah, they up and down the lineup, and uh, they had Ariota th pitching that day, too, so <laughs> makes it pretty tough. Pitches outside, evens the count at one and one. <laughs> What's amazing about Arietta is that, you know, he wasn't that much until about two years ago, and all of a sudden he's a world beater. Yeah, Baltimore it's like what happened? Unloaded him, and uh, all of a sudden. Yeah, just in time to be a star. Yeah. Be 
Eric uh, stepping off, let his defense get set before he delivers the next pitch. Coming in with the uh, fastball, Prunick falls it off. Told my wife I'd be home relatively early tonight. I said these high school games are only seven innings. You know. <laughs> well, then it got started late because of the JV game. We're at uh, over two hours right now. Can you imagine what it'd be like if we had to play seven? Oh, he's got, got him. him. Oh no, he was out. Looked like he was out. Well, the umpires have had a better night than South. I would say um, the umps have done a good job. York delivers, and Prunick uh, pops it up. Taken by Lindau. And there's two outs. One ben Soik. Out yep, one more out. Unless Salt can rally for uh, seven, eight. They need eight. Get it under ten. Well, 17 to tie, 18 to take the lead. Yeah, hey, <laughs> it's doable. <laughs> oh, right over his shoulders. He bent over. Soik is 0 for 2. Struck out in the second and hit into a fielder's choice in the fourth. Drives one to the to center field, but coming over is par and he makes the catch, and that's the ball game. That should do it, Mike. Yep, Sheboygan North the winner in this first of two North-South games this week. The next one will be Thursday. Tonight it was uh, North 18, South 1. Uh, thanks to the crew for their hard work and uh, for my partner Tom Grams. I'm Mike Martin saying thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you down the road.